Okay, so a while ago I was sent this tablet, the Blackview Tab 80, so I thought I'd do a review of it since they were so nice to send a unit. So this is an entry-level device which you can get for as low as 130 bucks, roughly. However, actually thinking and writing the review, even just after using it for a couple of months, turned out to be extremely tough, mostly because it can be summarized by this. This is a perfect example of a 130 bucks tablet. It lacks any issue that you would expect from such a low price, but it also does not have anything extraordinary or, you know, that you wouldn't expect. You are getting exactly your money's worth, but let's see that in more detail. And by the way, I noticed that the Amazon page of this tablet uses a fake background image that clearly looks AI generated. I wonder if this is even legal, weird, but okay. Let's start with the build quality. The entire device is aluminum except for the top plastic band that's needed for, you know, Wi-Fi and LTE. It's sturdy and bends without damaging, so you can just sit on it or whatever. You do have a nice camera ring on the back that looks Looks like it fits a double camera system but it's actually just one and the other is just a weird symbol that's just printed on it. On the front we do have bezels but they're reasonable and they allow to handle the device without the fear of accidental touches. We have a USB-C charging port, I would highly recommend using the charger that comes in the box for it since I've had issues charging this using other USB-C bricks I had laying, laying around. We do have an audio jack as well, given that this little thing also comes with a cover and protective glass, I think that it already scores, what, 4 points against high-end tablets that are sold without any kind of accessory, like charger, the lack of audio jack. However, we do not get fingerprint readers. You could set up a facial recognition system, but be careful with that because as this tablet does not have any kind of, you know, infrared camera or depth, this authentic authentication system is just bound to be very weak. The screen is cheap, but okay. It's an LCD 1080 by 800 pixels, 10 inches. I don't have any fancy way to check the needs of the display and even though the tablet is you know, just fine indoors, its brightness is easily beaten by any other device I have and I wouldn't recommend using it outdoors or in direct sunlight, even at peak brightness. But again, it is unfair to compare this tablet with the phones that are double the price, so just fine. The selfie camera is good enough to be used as a webcam for calls if you are in a very well lit environment, though you'll still be able to see a significant amount of noise around you. So let, let me show you. So this is an 8 megapixel camera. It can record in 1080p at 30 frames per second and it's fine, I guess. The main camera is a 13 megapixel and, and it can be used to quickly take pictures of, you know, parts of documents and such, but I would strongly recommend against using it for any other purpose. Again, let me show you. This is the room I am yeah, recording it. You see my prompter and such. And here's the back. And uh, I don't know, just hello. Audio-wise, the tablet is just perfect for light media consumption. It has stereo speakers which are loud enough to watch music or listen to music comfortably. Let me put some music as an example. Again, the tablet does feature an audio jack if you want to black plug in some headphones. I would show you, but I don't have any actually. Everything I have is Bluetooth nowadays, sorry. Nicely enough, this tablet does have LTE capabilities. You can insert up to two nano SIMs card or one nano SIM and one SD card. Given that this device only has 64 gig gigabytes of storage in the base model and four gigabytes of RAM, an SD card really is the cheapest way to extend the storage and make sure you don't run out of it immediately. Battery-wise, we have a 7680 mAh uh, 
our battery, which will make this device last quite a lot uh, of hours in active usage. Though again, you will have to keep the brightness at the top in most lighting scenarios. However, I did find this tablet to significantly drain the battery over time when it's in standby. I'm not talking about a level that makes me think there's a problem, it just discharges in three days or so, but I have found myself with a dead tablet more often than I would like. I would recommend turning this little device off if you won't use it for quite some time. Finally, software. This comes with its own Android skin, apparently that's what everybody is doing nowadays, and it's called Doke OS. Doke OS, I have no clue how they expect me to pronounce it. I have uh, found this to be an extremely minimal modification of Android, with most applications looking just normal. There's pretty much no bloatware, but it does come with all of the Google apps out of the box, and we do love Google Apps, don't we? Normal usage of this tablet is just fine. You won't be able to multitask or play detailed games, but light usage is you know, just fine. I didn't experience any significant stutter in my daily tasks with it, which were mostly like watching YouTube videos, reading comics, reading PDFs, taking notes, such things. Really light usage. One big benefit of this tablet is that it does feature Android 13, which is quite up to date. Bonus point for that. One last touch that surprised me is that we have a PC mode. That's a bit like what Samsung in, is doing with the Samsung DeX. It brings you to a desktop-like layout with a bottom panel and ability to open floating windows with the various applications inside of them. Somehow I lost my internet connection when triggering this mode for the first time, but whatever. I didn't even know this was a feature. I believe this is something that's added by Blackview as well, given that only uh, the only desktop mode I see in stock Android 13 is unfinished and looks completely different. You can plug in keyboard and mouse, but I was not able to connect this to an external monitor, which is a bit of a bummer. But again, I'm not sure how I even thought that connecting such an entry-level tablet to a 4K external monitor would even work. So this little thing does not have the power to handle such a job. So overall, simply did its job for its value. Nothing less, nothing more. Just like I said at the beginning, so don't tell me I tricked you into watching the whole video when I started with a perfect summary of it. Very last thing, I'm sorry if my voice is weird, but I've got flu and I'm just trying my best. Thanks everybody for following and see ya.